Okay. Um, all I did was go off to a, uh, it's a heat gun mounted in a bracket so that I have both hands free. It's not, I don't wave it like a pistol at something. It stays uh, in place, pointed upwards at about 60 degrees, and I just wave stuff around in it. But it's over on the other side of the room, so... Anyway, uh, I waved the stumble around in the heat stream until it got pretty toasty. And uh, it has since cooled off. That was a few minutes ago. And it looks pretty good. I don't see nearly as many scratches and stuff as I expected. Uh, so what we're going to do... Now, that's, I did end up... I decided there's probably a little too much of the uh, mahogany in there. So when we do the next coat, it'll be just the vintage amber by itself. I don't think we need any more of the the bluish undertone here. So the next step, if we were to sand it at this point, it'll just clog paper extra fast. It'll just get shiny. So the uh, most efficient thing to do at this point is just take some alcohol and a paper towel and go to town and get off as much from the surface as you can and when it, as long as it's wet it looks pretty good but it, it'll get uh, dull here real quick when it dries you know, the color's not too bad a little more yellow in it I think will be good or a little more amber in it. now this uh, after this step you can inspect uh, your sanding and by the way, uh, all that I used for sanding on this uh, was either my finger or some paper wrapped around a medium soft eraser. And uh, also I only sanded up to 400 grit. If you use anything that's finer than that, you'll end up actually kind of polishing the wood and the stain won't soak in very well. So, yeah, we need more, more beef here. Oh, another thing I've been meaning to mention and just jump back in my head. Notice how the perimeter of the chamber is black with a, like a starburst, kind of a ring around it. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you can sand that off. If by shortening the bowl, it'll go away. That kind of a ring is from heat generated inside the chamber outward. Meaning if you slice this thing like a loaf of bread, everywhere at all depths you would see this blackening in the same way as you took off the, the slices of wood. That's just uh, uh, nature of the beast. There's nothing you can do about that, so uh, let her be. And uh, that's just part of being a smoked pipe. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take some 600 grit now and lightly sand this guy. And uh, you don't really need to watch, but I'll start with... Uh, I'll start on it and then uh, shut the camera off rather than just occupy ridiculous amounts of time watching me move my fingers. By far the best way I've ever discovered for this type of sanding operation is to cut the paper into long strips about five-eighths or three-quarters of an inch wide. And then, like a conveyor belt, as it loads up, you just keep working it out. And if it gets floppy at the end, you just tear it off and just keep it going. If it's much wider than that, it get it doesn't turn corners and stuff very well, and if it's much narrower, uh, then whatever's pushing on it begins to get tucked under the edges or something. I don't know, but uh, about finger width is what you want. And once you try this, you'll you'll never go back. Okay, you'll notice that there's a kind of a yellowish color coming up. That doesn't mean anything's changing. That's just the nature of the beast. So I'm going to now sand this 
pipe and all its surfaces using 600 in my finger in this gentle fashion and turn the camera back on when I'm finished. Okay, I have uh, finished this first bout of sanding, uh, dragged some of it into the uh, area of the stem here just because it needed it, doesn't matter. Uh, nothing much going on in terms of surprise. There's a, a few faint pits that showed up in the heel of the pipe that uh, were not visible before, but that's part of the risk you take whenever you refinish a pipe. There could be uh, little sand specks and stuff in there that were hidden uh, previously. In any event, uh, we're going to get a nice rich color out of this. I'm not going to uh, put the mahogany and in black into this next uh, batch. We've got a I think enough contrast going on that just the uh, vintage amber by itself will do the job. So, and we'll be off to the races again here. Same uh, routine as before in that I'm just going to smear it on and uh, then work it with my hands wearing these gloves until the pipe is completely covered, or it begins to dry out. I'm pretty sure this guitar, this uh, uh, concentrated stain, is designed for guitars, because I get it from a, uh, a guitar uh, repair shop website, uh, Stuart McDonald. There's people who build and repair guitars the same way we build and repair pipes. And since they're made of wood, a lot of the same stuff is available in their sites. Oops, i got to remember to stay in the camera here. Okay. I'm liking the way this is looking. Okay, same as before, start the smear process so that we don't have any seams or lines in the stain as it dries. And what comes after this is uh, I'll wipe it down with alcohol one more time when it's uh, I'll, when this uh, gets completely spread around, I'll do exactly what I did before, which is uh, dry it uh, in a heat stream, and then uh, give it a wipe down with some uh, paper towels and alcohol, and then I'll go over to a low speed hard buffer that will. Uh, polish and remove any surface stain. It's a, a preparation for the actual shiny step. Whoop. Okay. Now, check closely if this thing focuses. Yeah, there we go. Right there you can see some uh, scratches that I missed in the course of getting this uh, uh, prepped up. So uh, off goes the camera. I'm going to uh, take care of this and uh, then do what I just described. And it should be pretty close to finished on the next time you see it, unless I run into some problems. Alrighty then.